Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Lock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, happy solemnity of the Holy Trinity. Welcome back to God's Playbook. Today is probably one of the most mysterious, beautiful, and complicated facets of our faith as we focus on God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How can three be one? One God, three persons, equal, distinctive, but absolutely imperative to our faith to understand the beauty and the complexity of the Trinity. My goal today is not to give a podcast that speaks about the theology of the Trinity. If you're looking for that, I'm sure they're out there. But I'm going to be quite honest, friends. I'm less interested in the theology and more interested in the practicality of the Trinity and our understanding how it needs to be very palpable how the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is alive in our midst and deserves our honor, praise, and gratitude. When we think of God the Father, friends, it's easy to identify with the creator of the universe. But the more we reflect upon the book of Genesis, notice that the words used are in our image and likeness, not in my image and likeness. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were absolutely responsible for the creation of the universe and all of its contents. We often identify his Father as being God's presence in the Old Testament, but again, it is important that we understand that where the Father is, the Son is, and the Spirit is, there are no division in God. The unity of the Trinity speaks of this closeness of relationship that God wants to have with us too. In the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus say in the beautiful prayer, May they be one, Father, as we are one. So this intimate union is so vital for us. In the person of Jesus, who is the second person of the Blessed Trinity, equally God is the Father and Holy Spirit. It is important that we understand that the human side of Jesus, though important, is second to his divine nature, fully God, fully human. The Holy Spirit, not a dove or a flame or wind. Indeed, these are all images to help us to identify with God, the Holy Spirit. He is the Ruah, the breath that gives life who is equal to the Father and Son in all his glory and majesty. Throughout our life, friends, in our spiritual lives, we might be able to connect at times in prayer differently with each person of the Trinity. Personally, I love the movie The Shack. If you've seen that, perhaps you might also like the movie or the book, which I also liked. I think there the Trinity is depicted in such a powerful way where it allows us to distinguish the three persons and yet how unified they are. I know some people have given criticism of how God the Father and the Holy Spirit are depicted in that film. However, I'm going to respectfully disagree. I think the directors did a fantastic job of showing the relationship of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at a level that the main character was able to process as he struggled with his earthly relationship with his father. And so God adapted himself so that way he would be more open to know and to love God as he should. Perhaps you have a film or a book or a vision of a saint or a teaching of the church that helps you to come to know the Trinity and love God more and more. I encourage you, use those images to assist you, to help you to deepen your relationship with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That as we make the sign of the cross on our body, that in and itself is a prayer as we honor Father, Son, and Spirit, three persons, one God. 
when we long to go to heaven one day, to spend time with the Trinity, to worship God with our whole being, mind, soul, body, strength. It's okay sometimes to be more closer to the Holy Spirit than the Father or Jesus than the Holy Spirit. Perhaps, depending on our stage of life, we may find ourselves gravitating to one person in the Trinity more so than the others. And yet we do not worship multiple gods, one God in three persons. St. Patrick used the clover. Many other theologians use different imagery to help us to come to understand. What I think is important for us to understand that no matter how much we read, no matter how much we think we understand the mystery, the concept of God is beyond our human capacity. And that's why we call it divine mystery. One day, God will reveal himself to us in a way that we can totally come to understand him. But that's in the life that is to come. Today, the church invites us to celebrate the solemnity, to give God his due praise. O most holy trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored. One of the most beautiful traditional hymns of our church that I would bet you will hear this Sunday at Mass. And yet, within that hymn, ancient in origin, we see the roots of the reason why we give God praise. His infinite goodness, his love for us, and by his very presence, we are blessed by his grace. We honor you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not just today, but every day. We thank you for your majesty. We thank you for creating the world and each one of us. We thank you for giving us yourself and the sacraments, for blessing us by your presence, by inscribing us in the palm of your hand and promising to be with us to the end of the age. O most holy trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored. For God's Playbook, friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.